Let's talk briefly about the analysis phase in the instructional design process. We've already taken a quick look at ADDI. Again, the very first step here is analyze. Before you do anything else, you need to kind of thoroughly analyze what's going on and figure out how you can best move on to the design process. So we'll look quickly at two kinds of analysis, a needs analysis and a learner analysis. There's a lot of different kinds of analyses you can do in this process, but I think these two are kind of the best place to get started with understanding how you might even work through this phase in beginning instructional design. There are lots more analysis types besides and how they're even organized is kind of a up for debate sometimes. You might do um, a performance analysis, task analysis, environment analysis, technical analysis, etc. There's a lot of different kinds of analysis. Uh, how you perform an analysis and um, how detailed it might be uh, will depend on you, your resources, your time, and often your organization as well if they have uh, some sort of existing process in place. So let's start with a needs analysis. Basically, the needs analysis is performed when there's some sort of desire for a change, whether that's an attitude change, a change in knowledge, behavioral change, usually it's among, you know, like staff at an organization or among a group of learners. There's some sort of desire for a change and we need to figure out if basically instruction is going to be a solution. So a needs analysis, we take a look at desire for the change that basically um, sparks the needs analysis. Uh, we look at why is the change needed, who wants the change, why do they want the change, how could it be achieved, is instruction the solution, where would the solution even be implemented. All these questions are kind of important when you're looking at um, a particular situation. It could be that in an organization, uh, say we have a widget factory, say workers are, are much slower to turn out widgets than they used to be. Maybe they, there's an attitude change that is desired by the factory supervisors. The supervisor is saying, hey, we need to speed things up here. Maybe if we get their attitudes changed, they're going to work faster. But maybe it's not the attitude that needs to change. Maybe there's actually a knowledge change needed or um, really what they want is a behavioral change that actually might apply better to this situation if you just want them to work faster. So. It starts with someone identifies the need for a change and then you analyze what that actual need is. So maybe the supervisor say there's an attitude change needed, but when performing the needs analysis, the designer actually learns, no, there's a, a knowledge gap that needs to be addressed, or maybe this is actually more of a behavioral problem and there's a different way to address that all together. But if an instructional designer is important performing this analysis, of course it's important to consider, is instruction even going to be the solution here? Or is there something else that um, might work better? So this is kind of a great place to start to figure out if a project is even needed. There are two kinds, it's kind of simplistic, but there's two kinds of a needs analysis, a formal versus informal. A formal might be nothing is known about the problem. Again, let's go back to the example of the widget factory. Um, we know that there is a problem, but we don't really know anything about it. Say the workers are working slowly, the supervisors have one opinion on why that is, maybe the workers have another and maybe you should check in with those workers. That would be one part of a, a thorough needs analysis. So you might do a full scale needs analysis. You'll collect data, analyze the situation, um, kind of study the the possible change that is needed, get different perspectives on it. You've heard the supervisor's perspective, I'm sure. Um, maybe you want to go talk to the workers. That would be really important if you want to have a successful project because they're the ones that the supervisors need to change. So they can probably give you some insight into what's going on and how your project and your role can help make that happen. So that would be a full scale formal needs analysis. Decide not only what the change is, what needs to happen, but how you can make it happen or maybe you don't need to do anything at all and it's going to be someone else's department. You also might do an informal needs analysis. A good example of this listed here might be that the, the designer might be brought in later in the process for a big project. There's already been a needs analysis um, or was it said there wasn't a big, big need for a needs analysis and it, it's not something that needs to be done. However, whenever you're new to a situation, it can give a, a 
a lot of context to a new project if you do perform even an informal needs analysis, knowing, you know, who the stakeholders are, what's the big picture here, what's the big change that is desired, how are we going to make that happen? And if you're only working on one sm small part of a bigger project, it can be really helpful to figure out where the whole project is going so that you can contribute as well as you can to that project. So that's the needs analysis. Let's talk about the learner analysis, a different kind of analysis. So this, if you were to do both kinds of analyses, um, oftentimes you might perform more than one. The learner analysis would likely come after the needs analysis, but you might end up actually collecting data along the way that would help with a learner analysis from the needs analysis. In general, the learner analysis is a task in which you want to figure out who your learners are you want to know all about them so that you can design instruction for them, assuming you figured out instruction was the solution for the needs analysis, that you want to figure out how to design instruction that's going to work really well for your learners, okay? So some guiding questions might be, who are they? What are their characteristics? What's the desired new behavior or attitude or whatever you have you here? Are there learning constraints for your learners? What might those be? Might be like computer issues, reading issues. You might think about the pedagogical considerations. We're kind of like leaning into design territory here. We're kind of deciding how you might teach them, what learning theories might come into consideration. And um, there are lots and lots of lists out there that can guide you on exactly what kind of data to collect and what to consider. I'm going to give you two different lists. These are just kind of, you know, Take what works for you, leave everything else behind. How you approach this phase as a designer is going to kind of depend on your own style or maybe, your, again, your organizational guidelines. So this is quite a, a long list. Let me just kind of um, open this all up here. All right, so this uh, author lists 14 specific things that you might consider in your learner analysis. These might be relevant to you and your project. They might not be, but there's something to consider. We have another list here from Dick, Carey, and Carey. I'll open these up. This one's a little more general. I like that there's a little bit more focus on kind of... um. Uh, your learner's kind of uh, cognitive abilities here, what their attitudes are, what their motivation is, their ability levels, their preferences. Notice this doesn't say styles, it says preferences. I, in general, styles are basically scientifically debunked, but people do have preferences, and those can definitely come into play in a learning situation. Um, attitude, really important here. Maybe group characteristics rather than individual characteristics. So that's just a whole other list for you to consider. There's, there's a lot of lists out there again. Take what works for you, leave the rest behind. But there are a couple strategies I want to cover in brief for kind of uh, digesting all the data that you've collected. Once you kind of decide what characteristics you want to study and you collect that information, here's a couple strategies for you. The first would be to come up with a, a learner ability chart. This is just a completely made up chart. The data type here would depend on what you collected, what you're in interested in, what you think will affect your project. And you might come up with um, three categories of learners. I don't necessarily love these titles here, Challenged, Average, Gifted, and Talented. I think they're a little goofy, but, you know, just one example that might work for you. Um, you might find there's a wide range in reading ability that could affect your uh, final instructional product. A uh, wide range of computer skills would certainly affect your product, or maybe even if you want to do it online or in person. Uh, enthusiasm, I would say, is really important. This could also be called attitude. Uh, this is one example of a, a learner ability chart that would give you some things to consider as you are constructing your uh, final training. Now that was kind of more of a group approach for approaching um, uh, learner characteristics and how they might affect your instructional product. Uh, one more one might be coming up with a fictitious profile. So I'll give you a moment here just to read this on screen. So in this case, we have a good idea of what the learner characteristics are of the group as a whole. We might come up with one or more fictitious profiles. Sometimes it's really helpful if you 
you know, humanize your learners, but even by coming up with a fictitious human, you're humanizing your learners. Or if you have some specific learners that you've been working with um, on your project, maybe again, we go back to the the widget factory, maybe you've got some actual workers there. They Maybe you could profile and use them as um, good examples of who you are designing uh, instructional solution for. But this is a good way to kind of help you um, understand who your learners are, where they're coming from, and maybe come up with some strategies to help teach them a little bit better. So you can come up with one profile, you can come up with multiple profiles, maybe you have a few different kinds of learners, but it's just a good strategy, especially for a really big project, to kind of make sure that you are going to create something that works for them. So further on in the process as you're performing the, the steps in Addy, if you're in the design phase or even the development phase, you might kind of stop, take a look back at your learner profiles and see if what you're designing or what you're developing actually would work for those specific learners. And if not, you might make adjustments. Wrap up. The analysis depends on what's going on. You might conduct one, you might conduct several, you might conduct none at all, depending on where you're brought in in the process or even what's really required. And there's no one perfect strategy for performing an analysis. Everyone approaches these things differently. It's a lot to kind of digest and take in to um, even get done in the first place. And your organization may have guidelines in place as well. If you're part of a team, perhaps there's someone there that has um, kind of a, a way they've gotten things done or a checklist. Maybe that's something that can help you as well. All right, let's do a quick knowledge check. A needs analysis is concerned with what? Existing learner knowledge, desire for some sort of change, or creating instructional solutions. Give me a moment. Desire for some sort of change. Again, this is kind of what sparks the needs analysis. So the analysis kind of revolves around, there's a desire for some sort of change. What is that change? Who wants it? Is instruction the solution? Is there gonna be a feasible solution? using instruction. Uh, those are the same things that you'll explore when doing a needs analysis. What is a learner analysis concerned with? Customizing instruction, necessity of training, or learner characteristics? I'll give you a moment. Learner characteristics. Uh, we are interested in who our learners are and how we can help them be successful through a training solution or an instructional solution. So we want to know who they are, how they work, and how we can help them learn or change their attitude or change their behavior best. All right, that's it for this. Thanks for tuning in.